We're going to talk a little bit more about things today. Um, specifically, we'll talk about digital positioning. And actually, that's kind of a broad, I don't know, a broad description of what we're going to be talking about today. Because really what we're talking about today is motors or position control that we can use a, uh, a, a processor to control it, right? And so there are all sorts of things that we need in terms of, well, the requirements of positioning. For example, let's take a look at an RC car, right? There's a couple of positioning type things, mechanisms that we want to digitally control with this. We've got a radio receiver in here that goes, that, that, that is processed, the, the data that comes in is processed by a controller, a receiver, and that receiver is supposed to control two things in prime, two things primarily whenever it comes to this device. One is the, the motion, right? So we've got these wheels back here. Now, the, the key thing about the wheels is that we really, we want control, but we don't need to have it precise. In other words, I don't need to get down to the 0.0001 RPM uh, control of this wheel. It's pretty much just speed or lack of speed, right? And so typically what we do to control these things is called a DC motor, a direct current motor. Really, when you talk about digital control, you don't usually think of DC motors because DC motors actually have varying levels of direct current voltage that, um, that change, the, change the speed of the wheels. And there's all sorts of things, the condition of the motor, the age of the motor, the, the, the torque that's being, or you know, the, the opposing uh, torque that's being put on the wheels that changes the speed. So we don't have accurate control of the speed. Um, We'll get to it in, in a second, but there's also another digital, digitally controlled item on this um, device, and that's the position of the steering. Now that does, we don't need to worry about speed so much as, well, simplicity of the interface, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. There are other things that do need, for example, accurate control. Look at this, uh, this, this optical drive here. This optical drive, there are actually three motors in here, and the three motors that are in here provide three very different types of features. For example, there's one motor in here that spins the optical disc, that spins the disc in here, so that it makes a, a, a very exact speed. All right, so we've got a very fast speed, but it's also very precise. It's, it's, it's very precise. And that's gonna be done with something called a brushless DC motor. Now that has a lot more about digital control than does the DC motor that powers the wheels on the RC car. Another thing that this, another motor that this has is that because the disc has concentric circles called tracks that the data is stored on, we need to have a read write head that is moved back and forth digitally. This one moved back and forth digitally is actually done with something called a stepper motor. Now a stepper motor isn't about speed, it's about accuracy. And the other thing that's great about a digital, about both the brushless DC and the stepper motor is that there is an ability to absolutely hold it with a fair amount of torque in a set position. But the problem with stepper motors is, is if you try and start getting too fast, you could outpace what the stepper motor could handle and it'll slip, it'll miss, it'll make it so that we'll lose some positioning information. So we've got a little bit in here. Um, another good application for a, for a stepper motor might be anything that requires position control. For example, if we've got an automotive speedometer, an automotive speedometer that has um, needs to be exactly in a correct position, right? And a stepper motor is a great, uh, great application, or uh, excuse me, a speedometer is a great application for a stepper motor. Because once again, we're not talking about high speed, we're talking about position control, all right? Then there's also an idea of simplicity of interface. Now, that goes back to the steering on the RC car. We want a very simple interface that gives us positioning control. But you know, we could just be playing around. Maybe we want to just simply move the jaw of the skeleton, right, of the skull. And, and position control is not necessarily vital whenever it comes to the position of the jaw, but we want simplicity of interface, something that makes it so that we don't have to have a whole lot of wires going back and forth here from between the processor 
and the device that we're controlling. So what we're going to do is we're going to start taking a look at in detail some of the devices and some of the motors that control these things. All right, we talked a little bit about this optical drive and whenever it comes to an optical drive there are three motors in there. I actually talked or told you that there were three motors in one of these guys, but I only described two of them. I talked about the, the brushless DC motor, the one that is used to keep an accurate speed, the rotation of our discs in there. Um, I talked about the stepper motor that is used to position the head. Uh, to make it so that the read-write head is in an accurate position whenever it is reading data from the CD-ROM. Um, but I didn't talk about the third one, and the third one is actually quite simple. The third one, well, and we're not really too worried about taking care of things on here. Anyway, the third one is actually this motor that's right under here. Let's see if we can pull this guy out a little bit and let you get a glance at it. I um, don't know if we're going to be able to pull it out all that easily. Let's see. There we go. All right, so we've got this. In fact, you can see the motors. You can see where the motors kind of are from just this angle. Um, this right here is the motor that is being connected to the brushless DC motor that keeps the optical disc rotating at a constant speed. This right here, this guy right here, that is the read write head. And the read write head is going to be controlled by a stepper motor that runs it back and forth across these rails. But there's another motor that we're interested in, and this other motor is the one that ejects the um, the CD-ROM tray, and we'll see if we can't get to that one too. In fact, you can kind of see the bottom of it right there. Let's go ahead and pop this guy out, and it should come off. All right, this little guy right here, and when I pulled it out, the little band that is wrapped around this guy, um, that guy actually popped off down there. But this thing right here, this, this right here is a DC motor. And that DC motor is controlled by differing levels of direct current. So it should only have two connections. Notice the two connections in here. One of them is connected to ground, one of them is connected to a positive voltage, which will turn that motor. Changing the polarity of that causes the motor to turn in the other direction. Another thing that we have here, and in fact there's a couple of pieces on this particular, just this board right here, that we can use for embedded system design. One is a push button. So we have a push button right here, and if you have a way of getting solder, of heating solder and removing it off of these pins, there are four pins right there, we could remove this button right here and have a button that we we could connect to our circuits on our on our Raspberry Pi. Right here we also have an LED. Once again, you've got two buttons of solder right there. Remove those, that guy could pop out. Also, you could just trim it real close right here to the board, and that'll actually give you a little bit of lead to play with. This guy right here is a limit switch. So whenever you turn one way or the other, it is going to make or close, make or break the connections between these three pins right here. So if once again, you pull the solder off of those three pads right there, <clears throat> and these two uh, little ears right here pinch in to pull that out, what's gonna happen is you've got a switch that says, okay, the CD-ROM uh, CD is all the way in or the CD-ROM is all the way out. It's just simply a limit switch, which will tell you whether or not the, the door is all the way in or out. We could use limit switches for all sorts of things in our, in our projects. These little connectors right here are kind of interesting. What you do is you, on this particular one, 
you can probably see that there is this long black piece of plastic right here and then this white plastic right here. The white plastic houses the connections that are being made to our uh, to, to, these, to this ribbon cable right here. This black piece, if it slides out, it will release this cable and you can see right here these contacts right here are what are being connected to the internals of this switch right here. We have another one here that we can pull forward and release that ribbon cable too. This ribbon cable is going to the carriage that's reading and going to the read write head and controlling the read write head. Now we've got a couple of pieces of electronics here. Um, at this point, I don't know that there's anything really useful to us. Uh, another one of these, uh, these cables that we can remove. So what we're gonna do right now is just simply remove this circuit board from our device. And there's actually another ribbon cable on the other side of this guy that we will want to disconnect. You can't necessarily see what I'm doing, but I basically, there's one of those connectors right here. That connector slides in to this multi-conductor, many, many conductors on that, uh, this ribbon cable right here. So we're gonna set aside our controller board got our controller board we've got our we've got our board that has the DC motor the limit switch the LED and the push button the push button by the way we talked about the limit switch telling you whether the carriage was all the way retracted or all the way extended the push button is just simply connected to that push button on the front of the CD ROM that allows us to um, uh, allows us to push the button in order to eject the device. Now, we talked a little bit about the stepper motors, and I'm going to pull this stepper motor out. Once you pull these guys out, it's very hard to get them calibrated again. But I'm going to pull this guy out and give you a little bit of a look at what this stepper motor does. All right, so this stepper motor has a worm gear on it, and so as it turns, it's going to move that worm gear back and forth in order to move this shuttle back and forth. Now remember, stepper motors are used for preci basically precision and being able to hold a position whenever we get to that position, the desired position. There are two coils on this particular stepper motor. And remember, what we've got are the four connectors right there. And those four connectors, these four connectors right here, two of them go to one of the coils, the other two go to the other coil. Oil. And so whichever coils we energize, the shaft will go to that position. Now, one of the things that's interesting about a stepper motor, and if you're ever picking up a motor and you're curious about whether or not it's a stepper motor, turn it lightly. And as you turn it lightly without power connected to it, you should still feel these little steps. And those little steps are basically the fact that the magnets are still trying to be attracted to the uh, metallic coils uh, that are in there. And so as you turn it, you still can kind of feel a little bit of these steps as you're going through. So we've got our two motors here. There's the one DC motor, which extends and retracts the uh, carriage and it's done with a uh, just two connectors put the polarity one way it's going to turn the motor one way put the polarity the other way it's going to turn the motor the other direction and then we've got our stepper motor with our four inputs there let's take a look at the one last motor that is of interest here if we pull apart this carriage just a bit more All right, a couple more, a couple more screws. I don't really have the, I probably should get a better screwdriver for this one. How about this guy? A little finer tip in order to get in there a little bit better. There we go. All right, now this is our brushless DC motor. Now the brushless DC motor, I don't know if you can see in here, but what we've got, and this is really not easy to see, but what, you can, what you've got in here are, there are coils inside here that the, the magnet is going to try and line itself up with. Notice this is not a stepper motor, it turns smoothly. We don't have that little, 
We don't have the the stepping that we feel when we turn the stepper motor because the the single we've got the single magnet in there and that single magnet if you can see inside there is going to line itself up with the coils now one of the things that's really important about this particular device is that the controller exists on here if you do not use the controller that is on here you will have to actually create your own controller that will digitally control this guy because what you're going to need to do is is energize the coils in the proper sequence and at the proper speed. And when we do that, um, we need to have some sort of a transistor circuit in order to take the higher voltage that's going to spin this guy um, and connect it based on whichever digital output we have coming from our processor. All right, so there's all the pieces of this CD-ROM, or this, excuse me, this optical drive. The real meat of what we wanted to talk about were, though, were these three motors, the DC motor, the stepper motor, and the brushless DC motor, all of which can be controlled using a microprocessor.